Ladies and gentlemen, this is UX, and this is Geography Now France by the channel Geography Now. Look, I tried my best to pronounce everything correctly. Oh, and Jack Brel was actually Belgian, not French. My mistake. Ah, okay, that's many people's mistake, right? Belgian? No, it must be French. Oh, wait a minute, he's Belgian? Yeah. yeah one thing I noticed a trend people ignore Belgium a lot. But okay. So yeah, France, <laughs> obviously lots of people told me to react to this Geography Now video because, you know, I know that how France has so many, you know, overseas uh, islands and things that they consider mainland France. So if you take, uh, you know, one of the France island in, I guess, Indian Ocean, if you take flight from there to Paris, that is considered inland, right, inner country flight, which is weird because it's way too far away. It's closer to India than to France, but yeah. So let's do this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out the reaction. Today, there's a link in the description. Check out the cards. We're basically playing cards in here. Let's watch it. Comme certains d'entre vous le savent, en huitième de mois français, j'ai donc en quelque sorte une obligation de honorer mon héritage. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, embellished 18th century Baroque architecture, and Napoleon. people really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, grass skirts, war dances, bamboo flutes, witch doctors, and a multifaceted history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet. Alors, allons-y. The first thing you need to know about France is that it's not just European, but a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones, more than any other country in the world. Mais comment est-ce que possible? Laissez-moi expliquer, gros garçon. France is kind of divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the département et territoire d'outre-mer, or Dom Tom. Before we tell you what they are, let's explain the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil penal code and administrative social tax law there you go. i think that's what's the difference between i guess france and england and other colonies basically european countries which has colonies everywhere right france consider them mainland apparently regions so they are like mainland france that's the thing because that's different from every everywhere else else right i mean even that what is that you know there's a a small part of france that is part of france near brazil right that is also considered mainland France. This is not, not mainland France, part of the you know mainland France or something like that. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana in South America, there you by go. the way, has the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator yeah. of the Earth, and Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas collectivities are French Polynesia, you've probably heard of Tahiti, that's French Polynesia, as well as Wallace and Futuna in the Pacific, St. Pierre and Miquelon right off the coast of Canada, St. Barlemy and St. Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Cruellen Islands, the St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, you can probably guess who used to own those, the Crozet Islands, and Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly uninhabited. And <coughs> yeah, so basically, French basically look all the places that they have around the world and just thought that anything that is close to Antarctica, that's just, I guess, overseas territory. Otherwise, everything else is basically regions, like they're part of the mainland France or something. I don't know, I'll, I think that's cool, right? Because no other empire has things like that. So if you go into one of these uh, islands or, you know, from there you take a flight to Paris, it's like you're, you know, taking flight, you know, inter, you know, international, in, I don't know, inter-country flight, let's just say. That's just, that just feels weird when you think about it, but it is true. 
only house temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which has a crazy murder story behind it. And last what? but not least, there's New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, what happened, they together then? give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. Okay, now let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco. Along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Isn't that more of a pentagon, that though? This side, the straight side. And this is kind of feels like straight because this is not that much of a slope and it feels straight only with somewhat features outside. Kind of feels like a pentagon then, yeah. Quite frankly, I was always under the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland France is also divided into 13 regions, including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, as well as the main cultural and commercial center, Paris. We could talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, the rich, vibrant... Oh, that's just awesome. We could talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably... Look at that shit. A first time, you know, I played that game Saboteur that had Paris City in it. In that, you know, obviously this is part of that. And I just felt like, holy shit, this is awesome. Right? And it also has a sets increase type jumping from buildings and shit. So that was pretty damn cool. And then obviously uh, there was Assassin's Creed Unity. Ah, uh, Unity. In the, I don't think this is in that one, but still. You know, so with the Saboteur, that felt really cool. Like, holy shit, look at that. Obviously at the time it was in the game, it's Nazi occupied France, but same shit. This is just awesome. Look at that. Too many buildings with a giant, you know, this thing in the center designed metropolitan layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere, the juxtaposition of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, Au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, au à minuit, il y a tout ce que vous voulez, aux champs Elysees. But that in itself would take too long, and we gotta get through three what more What the hell seconds. was that? The busiest airports are the two Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Côte d'Azur, and the second and third largest cities, Lyon Saint-Exupéry and Marseille Provence International. At around 643 thousand square kilometers France is the largest country in the EU the interesting thing about France is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity some of the most notable ones being Occitania Savoy Brittany Normandy Alsace a section of the Basque country Nice and the island of Corsica which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand these regions contribute their own unique piece of the French pie speaking of pie we all know about French food which is great because we're gonna discuss more about it in <laughs> If you look at France's physical makeup, you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture. Everything just kind of works out perfectly for them. For metropolitan France, big, rich, nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the Garonne, Dordogne, Loire, Seine, Meuse, and Rhône entangle the entire country north to south, east to west, allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country. Now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines. They enjoy a nice... I mean, you know, it's kind of understandable, right? With the geographical position of France, right? It's not way too north, but it's just north enough from the equator that it can have, you know, lost fields like that, rivers like that. Oceanic European climate, and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophes. Most of the country is made up of arable flat plains or small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation. And voila, you have an agricultural gold mine. In fact, out of every country in the EU, France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience, and only a few spots like in the Caucasus region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher. So there you go, food haven. In the south, you reach the mountainous regions of France, including the Pyrenees along the border with Spain, the Massif Central Plateaus, one of the most geologically studied places in Europe due to this strange formation. The Alps all along the borders with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans. It's mine. And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France. I mean, how are you gonna fight, you know, Switzerland? Even Nazis, like, we are not touching that shit let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in height to the Caucasus Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider the Caucasus region a part of Europe, some people don't, but that's just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia. I mean, is that true if you take, uh, you know, if you go to, you know, uh, France's edge at Mont Blanc, right? And from that, there is a tunnel. So if you go inside the tunnel, which is, I guess, cut through the Mont Blanc, 
right? And when that tunnel ends, you're in Italy now or something like that. But that's just cool when I think about it. Like, you know, you're going at the edge of your country. There's Mont Blanc, this giant, basically a mountain, right? You go inside the tunnel. When you come out, you're in a different country. Copia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere. Cheese and wine. The French are the largest yeah, consumers we know of that. cheese with over 1,200 different varieties found all over the country. The French also have a larger range of unconventionally consumed meat products. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat, and fish. However, the French aren't satisfied with just that. Other animals like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, veal, horse, frogs, and snails are consumed regularly. Speaking of which, the national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous, that's insect eating, countries in Europe as about 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the French, especially in Burgundy, the largest snail producing region in France. Unfortunately, Damn. due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw... Yeah, when it comes to food, I guess, you know, the stereotype everybody knows about, like how, you know, French people like to eat different type of things, not just eat, eat different type of things exquisite, you know, different type of meals, I guess. Sometimes I wonder how France isn't, you know, leading country in obesity, since they like to eat a lot. I guess they just like to eat different type of quality food, not just eat more. Or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually eh? finds its... What the fuck was that? ...region in France. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. Okay, you know, wait a second. All right, there you go. When a person becomes infected with T. gondii, the parasite forms cysts that can affect almost any part of the body, often your brain and muscle tissue of different organs. What? Lots of people in France have this? Including the heart. If you're generally healthy, your immune system keeps the parasite in check. Yeah, that makes sense. This would be a really big fucking issue that people know about. Of those who are infected, however, very few have symptoms because a healthy person's immune system usually keeps the parasite from causing illness. However, pregnant women and individuals who have compromised immune system should be cautious. For them, a uh, toxoplasma infection could cause serious health problems. Wait a minute, during this past pandemic, people who were affected by COVID basically, did they get screwed by this? Because COVID would definitely weaken your immune system. And obviously lots of people in France would have this. Well, is there an you know issue in that part? Like, you know, lots of people got screwed because of that. Because COVID definitely weakened lots of people's immune system. After that, this, you know, toxoplasma would basically screw people's lives, man. That's fucked up. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The Alps are famous for their charcuterie and fondue, Brittany for its crepes, Cantal. Yeah, I didn't see that in Google, but I guess that's also, yeah. For its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, L'Aveyron for Aligo, Rheim for its champagne, and then we get to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine vineyards in the world, pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks. To combat crop wastage on farms, France has even opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops in which you can buy disfigured produce for 30% off. Okay, isn't EU, uh, you know, uh, EU's headquarter is housed in France. France is some form of, I guess, leading country of EU or something like that. Because that would definitely make sense because they also have nuclear plants, right? Most of the country runs by nuclear energy. So I guess when it comes to, I guess, green things, they are really ahead of that. So they're like, okay, let's not do pollution. Okay, nuclear plants, there you go. You know, pollution as in, you know, air pollution, carbon dioxide, methane, that kind of thing. And then they're like, okay, let's not throw away. We are really food, food powered country. I guess lots of people like food here, right? We produce a lots of food. We produce lots of food, so let's not throw away foods either. So I guess, you know, France is really recycling green type of country. That's what I've come to realize.
Other than foodstuffs though, main exports are aircraft, chemicals, machinery, iron, and steel, electronics, motor vehicles, and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm Caribbean tropical climate, Guyana being part of the Amazon, having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95%, with over 1,100 species of birds and reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of Africa have deep jungle ravines and a common volcanic activity going on. The scattered islands are mostly uninhabited, sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs. The southern Antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with few grasses and vegetation. Kerwellen has these cabbage looking things going on. And these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins stampeding off the coasts. New Caledonia and French Polynesia awesome. are tropical Pacific islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. And of course, Adelie Land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes, now let's talk about who's right. All right. So, you know, France basically considered all these regions so part of mainland France, right? So technically, this France is the only country with that kind of a different geographical terrains, right? Because they are all considered part of the mainland France. Running the entire show. France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. The currency is a euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the channel. Now let's talk about the white people. <laughs> remember playing you know euro truck simulator 2 in that that was <laughs> i was playing that literally this happened and i was you know laughing like holy shit this is really like a you know top gear type of thing but it happened to me yeah i was playing the game obviously i started from you know london or something then i came from calais and just took a ferry and came to france and then <laughs> you know i was going and suddenly i don't know i wasn't paying attention because euro truck simulator is you know gets boring it's just driving right I don't know, I was looking at something and just suddenly car comes from the first, you know, in the head on basically. I suddenly turn over the lane and the entire trailer toppled basically. And then I realized, oh right, yeah, in France they drive a different side than, I guess, England. White French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern day France. That yeah. means genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin no and shit. Germanic roots also applies. As Normans, right? Nowadays, British are you know, most of Normans and Normans were French, so yeah. All three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is, of course, the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in Occitania. Corsicans have like this strange half French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Keep in mind though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Outside of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically have their own creoles or dialects. For example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say, Sac à marché, tout bon man, timal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say, Coiffé, comment il est, à où? France is the most visited country in the world as more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at a about 80 million. Culture-wise, no there is too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries. Well, after reacting to a year of history videos, I think I know mo most of them, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure there are lots of things that I no don't know about that, you know, France history too, all the wars and shit. But yeah, most of significant things I already know. Victories, losses, folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a whole separate YouTube channel. But for what it's worth, since the Middle Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing Anglophone driven Yeah, well, competition brings best out of you, I guess. So, you know, British were spreading all around France. Like, fuck that, we can't have that. So we also have to spread. So there you go. French and, you know, England, basically 
top two list of the most colonies around the world. Global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, and weekend. In addition, the French media's top yeah, that's gonna work. the CSA and CNC have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French language between the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and half the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be French. Yeah, in this Vogue uh, Gen Z type of world we live in, I'm pretty sure people lose their mind over this shit soon enough. Like, oh, this is discriminatory, this and that. France is of course home to a plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemists Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal- That's just fucked up. <laughs> Your parents were really famous scientists. You do well enough, but still you're not gonna reach, you know, Marie Curie level, right? So <laughs> when you die, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I think people are not gonna remember me. That's just fucked up, man. Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who by the way invented the metric system, musicians yeah, like yeah. Ramlo, Lully, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons, Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel. Yeah. <clears throat> Basically, you know, metric system is damn fucking accurate and, you know, even the countries that use imperial system, when they really look now, even they are kind of using metric system in the most places, but still they're not going to admit it because it's French. Chanel and Christine Duart. I mean, it's no secret, France is often touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists like Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about kings Louis XIV and XVI, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role, and to this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have some of the shortest <laughs> work weeks with only about six to seven hours on average a day. And that's enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people Yeah, that time doesn't do well for the stereotype of France. Well, like, you know, the, uh, there, there must be scientists who basically do some kind of, I guess, you know, wild, wild you know, basically countrywide, you know, research at a certain level. Like, what is the mental state of these people? Are they, you know, less stressed out, less anxiety, you know, less depressed compared to the world? Is this really working? Because I don't know. People like to make fun a lot of time. Like, you know, friends like to sleep a lot, work less and this and that. Maybe that's good for your mental health and every other country who's really productive, right? Who really put like to put in hours, right? Sleep less. They have real mental issues. I don't know when. So maybe this is working. Who the fuck knows? I'm off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it. <laughs> I like how he just shows people napping in the public. Like, you know, they just like to have nap. They don't even go to their house. They just nap everywhere. Right, they are go walking outside and they just take a nap on the bench or something. Oh, which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages in the world. And of course, the sport French people rank highest in the world going on strike. I mean, the yeah, last you thing go. you want to do is interrupt a Frenchman's <laughs> nap during a six hour shift with corporate policy changes. <laughs> yep, the world can be a cruel, cruel place. Let's see how France survives in the jungle. <laughs> Yeah, another stereotype of France, right? Lots of riots, right? Protests. Like if you, you know, uh, I don't know. I think, you know, Top Gear makes a lot of that jokes, right? Lots of American souls and things. Comedians make that joke. Like if you get out of the, you know, you land in France, Paris, and just get out of the airport and there are riots everywhere. When it comes to France, they don't discriminate. They hate everyone equally. No, yeah. but seriously, France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, 
followed by sub-Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. I didn't know that French really liked Japanese, huh? Likewise, Japan sort of shares the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and borderline harass each other. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense since France and Japan is way far in the distance from each other, right? I mean, that's the saying goes, right? I mean, you know, best relationship is from really far away, I guess, because when they come close, they will fight other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred year war with them, and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high, and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War, and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. So fellow Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends though would probably be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of funny because historically the only country that was consistently an opponent of France was Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia. I mean, isn't England there too? With the tons of fucking war, right? If you go to the Wikipedia page about France versus England, there are way too many wars and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schuman's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions, and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the Union. And Belgium is like their little brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking roommate and visits France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. In conclusion, I think it's gonna be fine right because that's just you know germany before was prussia and that saying goes basically how prussian army ha ha has a government or state or whatever so basically it was really militarized country prussia and prussia became germany and obviously it's just changing the name doesn't do shit they're still very militarized so you know wars happened world war one world war two they were really strong but after that eu happened right you know, long lasting peace happened, and all those people who were militarized basically became engineers, right? Automotive engineering hub of the world. So, I guess now peace is going to last because it's no longer militarized in that sense. It's militarized, you know, in I guess engineering way. They make really good shit now. Les Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air désinvolus, mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, par des hordes de touristes qui piétinent vos jardins, massacrent votre gastronomie et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leurs désirs sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut le comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony Gabon is coming up next. You know what I like how he just didn't rant on about Paris because I'm pretty sure there's way too much thing to say about Paris, right? He didn't even talk about Eiffel Tower that I think. So, you know, I like that because everybody knows about Paris. Everybody hears about Paris all the time, right? He just briefly touched it and moved on. This is why I love this channel, right? Geography Now, they always tackle the topics that people want to know about, not just the most famous things. Right, people, that was Geography Now France by the channel Geography Now. That was awesome, right? I like, you know, all this type of video. Comment down what the next Geography Now video you want me to react to. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I already reacted to one or two now. There's a playlist I guess I, I created. I have to check, but yeah. Right, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the weeks on day. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards, so please check out the cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.